All right, there's our bell work for the day. All right, there we go. A couple lines done, that's pretty quick. There's our objective for today. I can simplify square roots. Talk about that here in a second. So square roots, we're gonna look at cube roots as well. So we gotta be able to simplify those. Um, but before we do, the symbol for square roots looks like this. And this, it kind of looks like a long division symbol, which, well, they used to look like this. Now that we do a lot of long division. But square roots look like this, okay? And a cube root will look, it's gonna have the same symbol, but it's, it's got a three right here to indicate the cube part of that. Now, just so everyone understands, there is a two right there, and, and it's, it's smaller, by the way. That's a, this three right here is smaller in the top left corner. These are related to exponents, which were in the top right corner from the bases, right? So if you saw something like um, five to the power of four, see how that exponent's in the top right? Roots are in the top left with this symbol. This is called a radical, not that I think anyone cares, but it's called a radical, okay? So this is taking roots and it's possible to take higher values than just three or even two. And remember the two doesn't, it's not gonna show the two. So if you do not see the, a number right here in the top left, it's a two, it has to be a two. Um, but for now, we're just looking at square roots and cube roots, okay? Now, uh, when talking about, well, well, we'll start with square roots. I don't, I don't think we'll go into cube roots too much. Square roots, when talking about square roots, we need to look at what we call perfect square, uh, perfect squares, perfect squares. All right, so I'm gonna start with some exponential form and we'll go up to 10. So I'm gonna say one, two, these are all bases by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and uh, 10. Okay, so we need these all as exponents, uh, particularly since we're looking at squares, we're looking at what we have as powers of two, okay? So powers of two are also known as squared. Okay, so like this one right here would say that's two squared. Or this one would be four squared, okay? Um, but what we get out of these, once we square them, and of course you could just multiply them if you wanted to, but it's just the base multiplied by itself, and then we get a squared value. So one times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, four times four is 16, Five times five is 25, six times six is 36, seven times seven is 49, eight times eight is 64, nine times nine is 81, and 10 times 10 is 100, okay? So we said perfect squares. Perfect squares are these purple numbers right here, okay? Uh, so that just means that what we've done is we've taken, and there's, there's more, but all we've done is we've taken a whole value as a base and raised it to the power of two. So you could say, well, 11 to the power of two is 121. 121 is also a perfect square. Or you could, you could go as high as you want, like 25 to the power of two, 625. Okay, that's also a perfect square. So this it's not limited to this list. But what we then know is uh, from these 10 values, just from the 10 that we have listed, is that if you take these perfect squares, 149, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. If you were to square root these, or take the square root of these, then you would end up with whole values. Okay, but again, it's the purple numbers that are considered perfect squares on these. All right, so like this one, uh, the square root of 1 would be 1. The square root of 4 is 2. See how we're just listing the bases from over here? The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 81 is 9. And the square root of 100 is 10. And again, there's more. But that's just a, an example of what we have as perfect squares. 
Now, generally the question comes up, well, why is it uh, a perfect square? It's because if you were actually to make a square from this, then you say, well, um, these the, the purple values are like area. So if I said, look, if you have an area that's 100, could you tell me the corresponding side length, right? Now remember, it's a square, so the side lengths are supposed to be the same. So we're just saying, well, 100, it needs to equal, in this particular example, it needs to equal something multiplied by itself, right? And no, I did not use A as much as some of you guys would want me to right here. And people think that's super funny, but whatever. So what number multiplied by itself is 100? Well, that means that that S value is 10, right? Because 10 times 10 is 100. So that means the side length of this square would be 10, whatever the units are, on all the sides, okay? So that's really what square roots are, are asking. Um, we'll, we'll put that down here. Uh, uh, square root is the same as asking um, with the area given, this may sound more nerdy than you'd want it to, but with an area that you have already, what is the corresponding side length of the square? So yeah, we're always gonna be dealing with squares with square roots. And that's why we call these powers of two squares. Like, like it, we're talking about this column right here. So this is like saying, well, if the area of a square is 16, what's the side length? It's four. Or if the area of a square is 49, what's its side length? Seven. Thank you. Let's um, fix that. Boom. That should be a 10 right there. Thank you. Now, just real quick, on a side note, because we're all, not that these are perfect squares. These would be cubes. But when you look at a cube, and so I take in, uh, let's, that's a square. And let's see if we can do this decently. There we go. So I've kind of drawn a, a couple squares right there. Remember to make it a cube. A cube is three dimensional. Um, that's not my best word, but it's not my worst actually. As surprising as that may seem. But in any case, uh, the side lengths for cubes are all the same as well. Okay, so that's a height of side length. Same side length as the base length or width. And then the depth there is the same side length as well. Okay, so um, uh, when we look at cube roots, remember it looks like this. We're looking at more like a volume. It's like saying, well, if you have a volume right here, so you take the cube root of the volume, and that would be the side length. Okay, so whatever the volume is, and of course it's just three uh, s times s times s, whatever the side length is. So again, if, if we used like 10 as an example, because that's an easy one to work with, 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So it'd be like saying, well, if you have a volume of 1,000, what's its side length? It would be 10, okay? But it's, it's working backwards. It's not giving us the side length first, it's giving us the volume first. Write and solve an equation to find the side length of a square with an area of 25. So again, not that you'd have to draw a square, but uh, sometimes the diagrams help. And we're saying that the area of this is 25 square centimeters. So what's its side length? Well, that means the side length would have to be five centimeters. How do we know? Because five times five, that's how you find the area of a square. It's the same side length and width. So it's five times five is 25. So that side length would be, well, five centimeters. Now here, here's a cube. Here's a cube again. Let's, let's see if we can draw a cube here. Make it look at least kind of pretty. I'll try to draw this one a little better. That's not, I think it's a little bit better. All right. So on this one, we're saying that the volume of this cube is 27 inches cubed. But what we would really like is the actual side length. And remember the interesting or the unique thing about cubes is that the side lengths are all the same. So we're really looking at, at saying, well, what multiplied by itself 
because that's what the volume is, but multiplied by itself three times would give us a value of 27 cubic inches. So yeah, three would be the answer on this one. And remember, yeah, this is a word problem, so make sure you label this as three inches. Well, how do we get three? Because three times three is nine, and then multiply that by three to get the 27 cubic inches, okay? So the answer to this one is it would be three inches. Now, uh, you know, it's very common for us to make mistakes right now when we're thinking, oh, well, multiplied by itself three times is uh, 27 or whatever value it is. It will take some time, especially now, that we're just getting used to this stuff to really figure this stuff out. Although, well, we'll we're going to show you some shortcuts as we work through this lesson. But uh, just based on what we've gone over, yes, it's, it does take some thought. It does take some time to figure that stuff out. All right, let's solve these equations. And uh, uh, so let's start with part A here. Let's go to A. So that's x to the power of 2 equals 64. So this is asking, well, what times itself is 64? Or, or it's like saying, well, it's um, a volume of 64. What's the side length? Yeah, that's 8 right there. So we would know then that x in this case would be 8 because we know 8 times 8 is 64. Now, just so everyone understands, this is uh, where we can use a principle of equality. Um, where you have an exponent of 2, that's where we need these square roots. But remember, with the principle of equality, if you do it to one side, you also must do it to the other side of the equal sign as well. Okay? So, whatever you do to one side, you got to do the other side. It still applies even when working with square roots like this. Now, do be careful with square roots because in the future they're going to say you're going to have to check this to make sure. And that's true. You should check to make sure. And we already know, though, that 8 times 8 is 64. So, it does check out. All right, part B. So this is saying what times itself is negative 64. Now it's common at this point for students, because we're still new at this, to say, well, x is equal to negative 8. Well, that's, um, that's not true at all, actually. So negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64, because there's two negatives being multiplied. 2 is even, which makes the answer positive. This would not be negative 64. So negative 8, as it turns out, will not work. We've got to get rid of that. And we know it's not positive 8 either. Now, the thing about powers of 2 like this is when we say that it's equal to a negative value like this one, there's actually no real solution. So the answer, it, there is an answer that exists in mathematics. It's just right now all we get to say about it is that it's not real. I think in 10th grade, that's when you guys will go over this stuff and then you'll figure out, oh, there is an answer to this. It probably won't make any sense. It definitely won't make sense right now, which is why I'm not going to tell you <laughs> exactly what it is. So on this next one, now that's a power of 3. And like I said before, that, that would be like a cube root right there. Okay, So that's a cube root, what I have in purple. But since this is an equation, we do need to do it to both sides of the equal sign. Now, what happens essentially, and you'll learn more about this next year in ninth grade, is that the 3s essentially cancel each other out. Well, they become phantom ones, really. So I just cross them out. So that's x equals now. And that's a cube root of 8. So again, we're looking and thinking, what times itself three times is 8, right? Because it's uh, side length times side length times side length for volume. Because this is a volume question because it's a cubed value. It's a power of 3. And again, that may take some thought, but that's where x is 2. 2 times 2, if you replace those s's, 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So we get x equals 2. Now for part D, this one is different than uh, part B, right? And yeah, for this one, we're going to say, look, take the cube root of the x to the power of 3. But if you do it to one side, you got to do the other side still. But is there a number that multiplies by itself three times to get a negative? Yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, so it's just like what we did in C there. It's, it's 2 to get 8, but the negative would be a negative 2. So just, just remember that. That's, uh, that's like saying, well, then you'd have negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's three negative 2s multiplied together. That's three negatives. Three negatives is odd. So that would tell us that the answer is a negative, and that's what we get, that negative 8 right there. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. We already know that. So uh, that's our answer. 
So again, the main difference with this in that we have an answer for part D is that the exponent is three, whereas on part B, the exponent was two and it equals a negative. You can't have an exponent of two with negatives like this, where the base is X, but where the exponent is three and the base is X, yes, you can solve those because of the odd exponent. What about E? Yeah, we can do E. So again, for this one you'd say, well, take the cube root of the x to the power of three, but if you do it to one side, you gotta do it to the other side. That'll leave you with just x. So what multiplied by itself is one? Well, one is, of course, but if, what if you do it three times? Yeah, still one. So again, if you replaced x with one here, like if you type this into a calculator, one to the power of three, you'd get one. And that checks out. Or part f. Well, that's a power of two, so we're looking at square roots now. Uh, and a square root, again, that would be like showing a two right there. And the twos become phantom ones, which leaves you with just x. So what number multiplied by itself is nine? It's three. So x equals three in this one. So let, let's look at the, the full, all these problems right here, okay? Now, some of you noticed that I did not box the answers for A and F, and that's on purpose for now. Because, let's, let's go to A here, and let's look a little bit closer at A. Um, is there another value that multiplies by itself to get 64? And we did briefly cover this in, um, I guess, part B. There is, there's another value that would multiply by itself to get 64. Now it is related to eight, but remember this is something multiplied by itself, that's two. Two is even, so that means if you made that negative eight, it would still work, okay? This is showing two different answers that would make this a true statement. So we need to show both answers that would make it true. And again, we could, we could show this. Our first answer, eight there, eight times eight. Yeah, that's 64, that checks off. But what about negative eight? Well, that'd be negative eight times negative eight, and it still equals positive 64 on that, okay? This means if I went now to part F here, not only would three equal X and make it true, but if you made X equal negative three, it would still be true. Because once again, negative three times negative three is nine. So when you see powers of two you, uh, in equations like this, you should be expecting uh, some of the answers, well, you should be expecting there to be two answers, unless, by chance, it's just not real. Now you'll notice uh, in the instructions here, it says express your answer in simplest radical form, uh, which means that we don't want decimals, okay? So on this one, uh, part G, if you were to take the square root of the x to the power of two, you would get x. But if you take the square root of one side of the equal sign, you gotta do the other side as well. So that's the square root of five. Now you could think, well, what number multiplied by itself is five? And at, at this point, a lot of students would say, well, 2.5. 2.5 times itself is five. That's not true. 2.5 times 2.5, I believe is 6.25. It's different, okay? It's not multiplied by two, it's multiplied by itself, okay? So what number multiplied by itself is five, and uh, you could actually try this out by hand and it would take a long time. We don't really want you to do that though. This is what this, if you found the decimal, it's irrational, which means the decimal would go on forever and ever, never repeating or terminating. So since it wants our answers in simplest radical form, we're just gonna keep this as a square root of five. Now, is it possible to further simplify that? Yes, it, yes it is, but we'll get more into that later, okay? because it is possible to simplify these. And yes, if you wanted the decimal on that, looks like it's 2.236-ish. Uh, All right, what about uh, x to the power of two equals 10? Again, we're gonna take the square root of both sides of the equal sign, that's principle of equality. That'll leave us with x. Again, that, that x, uh, the root of two and the two exponent, they become phantom one, so it's just like x to the power of one right here. We don't show that exponent. And the square root of 10, well, uh, to, to give you a little introduction on this, this is what we call a factor tree that we generally use to factor these or to see if it can be simplified. You figure out any of your prime factors of any value, like this one, 10, and 
for 10, you just got two and five. Those are both prime. So we circle these values and then it kind of creates a tree with branches. Of course, you could have more branches than this, but this one only has two. Um, so see how there's not any values that match? Two and five don't match, which means that this one just stays the square root of 10. Now, if there were matches, we'll get into that, what we will do about that. But for now, just understand that since there are no matches, just keep it as a square root of 10. What about i? Well, this is a cube root now because it's an exponent of 3 there for base x. So I got a cube root of 15 there. So this will give me x equals. And so again, we could look at 15 for its prime factors. You'd get 5 and 3, both of which are prime. Now this one for cube roots like this one where the exponent's 3 and the root is 3, you'd need triples, a matching triple set. Okay, But again, there's no triples that match it's just 5 and 3, so this one would stay the cube root of 15. So again, this is considered simplest radical because it's got the root symbol. Simplest radical form. Now, the sooner you make this, this type of problem an instinct to see, well, look, you take the square root of both sides. That's a good start. But uh, it's the negative that I'm talking about. If you make that, if you see an exponent of 2 with x, and you see that you're taking the power of two of something to get something negative, you know, it's just, it should just not be real. So the symbol they, they should have used in seventh grade should look something like that for real numbers. Not that I think anyone remembers anything that far back. Now, again, you, you maybe you're asking yourself, well, is there such a thing as a not real number? There is, but we're not covering that in eighth grade. All right, here's a cube, uh, a power to three, right? Which is cube. And so to solve this one, we would take the cube root of not only the x to the power of 3, but also the other side of the equal sign, negative 512. And since this is an exponent of 3, we know that it is possible for the answer to be negative. That would be okay. But this is where we're going to use that um, factor tree to figure out how we're going to break this up. Okay, 512, it's kind of big, so I'm going to need some space on this. All right, so let's look at 512. And again, I'm, I'm breaking this up. I'm just saying, well, can I divide it by anything? Anything would work, okay? So 512, I see it's an, uh, an even number, so I know it's divisible by 2 at least. So 512 divided by 2, that will give me the other factor, which appears to be 256. And that's even as well, so I know that's divisible by 2. And yes, I am purposely writing the small because I think there's a lot of them. So that'd be 128 right there. And that splits up into 2 again and 64, which splits up into 2 and 32. And yeah, I, I see how I'm circling those 2s. That's because they're prime. 32 splits up into 2 and 16. So I know that's kind of writing smaller and smaller. Um, I'll break it up like this. Then that would, 16 would break up into 2 and 8, which would then break up into 2 and 4. And 4 splits up into 2 and 2. All right, like this. That's a lot of twos, and that's okay if it, if it is. Uh, because that means that, uh, again, we don't worry about the negative now, but I'm saying that it's, instead of writing this as 512, it's the cube root of all those twos multiplied together. And yes, it is okay to rewrite the number as a product of its factors. Well, which factors? Well, all the twos that I circled. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's put in all nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, this is where we make what we call perfect cubes in this case. If it was a square root, we'd be looking for perfect squares. A perfect cube is when we look and see triples of the same value. So there's three sets of two right there. So if you took the cube root of all three of those twos, you'd get a two. Or if you took the cube root of these three twos, see how it's a triple set, you'd get two. Well, there's another set of three twos right there, so there's another two right there. We're just gonna multiply these. Two times two times two is eight. So just putting that answer in with the x over there with the negative, we do need that negative. We get uh, x equals negative eight. So, and again, you could check this. Well, is negative 8 times negative 8 times negative 8 negative 512? Yeah, if you put that in the calculator, you'd get 512. 
And uh, just like I said, with the posters that we have around the room, I, I can look there and see in, well, just the cube one. I see eight to the power of three is 512. So I know that this was done right. I probably should have told you that the poster had that on, on there already, but it's good to see this, this type of example. Let's do L then. So this one's a power of two. So once again, we're gonna take uh, square roots on this. Now eight, uh, again, you can't find something to multiply it by itself to get eight. It'd be a uh, irrational decimal. I mean, we can get the X, but one multiplied by itself is eight. Can't do it. It's a uh, very ugly decimal. So we're gonna take the eight and split it up, okay? Uh, I'd say four and two, two is prime. Four splits up into two and two, right here like this, okay? So that's like saying you take the square root of two times two times two. But again, since this is a square root, we're looking for pairs that match. So there's a pair of twos that match. So again, that's the square root of two times two, which is just the green two right there. But this other two, it doesn't have a match, so it stays inside the square root. Now you can show multiplication between those if you'd like, but it's not really required. Uh, this though is our answer for the second one. X equals two times the square root of two. Then you, you could not show the multiplication right there too. All right, more equations and we'll solve these. Should be pretty good stuff. Uh, now, when we, when we look at square roots like we are on M, X to the power of two equals 45. So I'm gonna show you two different methods to uh, simplify this one in what, what is called simplest radical form. And that would first be just to take the square root of both sides of the equal sign, right, to get X. Well, 45, we're gonna split the 45. So this is our first method right here, okay? So I'd say, well, that'd be five times uh, nine right there. Five is prime. Nine is three times three. Okay, so instead of writing it as a square root of 45, I'm gonna write it as a square root of three times three times five. Yeah, the order of that doesn't matter. But see how we get uh, this pair of threes right here? Since it's a square root of, a square root, I just need a pair, and that's a pair of threes. So the square root of three times three is three. That'd be like the square root of nine, and nine is a perfect square. Well, and then we got this five right here. It didn't have anything to pair with, so it's three times the square root of five. And that's good. Okay, so this is our first method. And being a math nerd, I actually like this method probably more than I should. But in any case, there's a second method, which is I actually still prefer more than this. It's called the calculator method. So in order to do this on a calculator, this is the button sequence that you're going to need to go through, okay? Because it's a square root. So the first button you're going to need to push, at least on the calculators that we have in class, is the second button. It's in the top left. It's green. And then you're gonna push the X to the power of two button. It's one button to the left of seven. Now on your screen, you'll see uh, the square root symbol with a box inside it. Okay, and this is blinking the boxes. Well, we wanted the square root of 45, so you're just gonna type in 45 now and you'll see it comes up as 45 here. Now push equals. And the calculators that we have will simplify this for you as three times the square root of five. So then you would know that your answer is three times the square root of five. It's the same answer that we got right here. Now these calculators that we have will not do cube roots. They will not do cube roots. So we're gonna have to do these by hand one way or the other. And that's where those factor trees come in, right? So I'd say, uh, uh, look at 250. That's gonna be, I would say 25 and 10. You could have divided by two, I guess. But I'm using 10 because the ones place value is zero. 25 splits up into 5 and 5, both of which are prime. And then 10 splits up into 5 and 2, both of which are prime. So if I wanted to take this cube root of these two values, I'd get x equals the cube root of 5 times 5 times 5 times 2. But remember, I'm looking for any triples in this cube root. And yeah, there's a triple 5 right there. So that ends up being just five, right? Because it's the cube root of that. Uh, but the two has nothing to match with, so it's uh, the cube root of two right there. 
So x equals 5 times the cube root of 2. So on part O, we got to do the same thing. x to the power of 3 equals 128. Let's take the cube root of both of these. All right? So that would give me x equals, but I got to break up the 128, right? Because it's not a perfect cube. And I can look at the poster for that. The nearest perfect cube would be 125. That's not going to work for that one. So I'd say, well, that would be, uh, I'd say, well, it looks like it's divisible by 4, which would be 32. And that's divisible by 4 as well, which would be 4 and 8. 8 is divisible by 4 as well, 4 and 2. Now, just so you understand, this, this is a shortcut to this method, how I got triple 4s right here. They're not prime, so I didn't circle them. You'll circle the 2, though. Uh, but if you did not notice that, that's okay, because you can further split up the 4s into more 2s. 2 and 2 for each 4. So those are all individual 2s right there. And see how that, this is a factor tree. It comes at, we circle the end of each branch so that we know it's been ended. So then, x then equals the cube root of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2. And since I'm looking for a cube root, I need groups of three 2s. So there's three 2s there which means that the cube root of that would be just 2. And then we get this other set of three twos right there. That's another 2. And then this 2 that remains is still in the cube root. Well, just do your actual multiplication there. 2 times 2 is 4. And then keep your cube root of 2 right there. We'll, I'll, I'll put the multiplication just so we know. It's not 4 to the power of 3. It's 4 times the cube root of 2. And, yeah, that'd be our answer right there. All right, here's a to the power of 2 equals 136. Now, uh, we, we could split this up, but since it's a power of 2, I know the calculator will simplify this one for me. It would be very nice if it would do that. So I am taking the square root of both of these, which will give me a. So here again is the button sequence, right? You push that second button in the top left of the calculator. And then you're going to push the x squared, one button to the left of 7. And on the calculator, show the square root. Now, since we're working with a fraction, I'm going to push the n over d button. And so it gives us a fraction inside the square root. I'll just uh, type a 1 in the numerator, and then I go down. So I'm pushing the downward uh, cursor button. And then type in 36, and then enter. And this will give you the answer, 1 over 6. Now, again, this means that if you went back and said, well, 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 is 1 over 36, yeah, according to fraction multiplication. So there we go. That's it. So what about a, a cube like this one? Now, if it works, and, and I'm, this one I know will work because the 27 is a perfect cube. I know we didn't show the list, but it's something multiplied by itself three times is, is the whole value to get 27. And then something multiplied by itself three times can be one as well. That's a whole value. So to put this into the calculator, here's what you're going to do. Because we are taking the cube root of both of these, right? So to access the cube root, here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to push three. Now this first three that I put right here is to tell the calculator that I want the cube root. Now right now it just thinks you're putting in the three button. But to tell it that it's a, a root, what you're going to do is you're going to push second. And then you're going to push the exponent button. Now on the calculator, it just had a 3. But then as soon as you push second exponent, then it changed it to a cube root with uh, the box to fill in right there. So to fill in that box, we're going to push the n over d button because we're working with a fraction. Push a 1 because that's our numerator. And go down to the denominator. And then type in a 27. And then enter. And this would tell you that z equals one-third. So in other words, one-third times one-third times one-third is 1 over 27. And that's our answer right there. All right, take 15 seconds, type this one into the calculator, and see what the answer is. This one should come out clean, although it may not look like it is. But I know that it will because 16 is a perfect square. We're just looking at 0.16. 
Type this one in the calculator, then we'll show the answer here. All right, when I put the square root of 0 0.16 in my calculator, I get 0 0.4. And sure enough, 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 is 0 0.16. So if I replace this y value with this decimal, um, it would be a true statement. So it checks off. So it is possible, and you'll see some stuff like this on the, on the assignment. In fact, on X, we're going to change this just a little bit so it kind of reflects the assignment. We're going to put a V times X to the power of 2. That's very abstract. There's no numbers, but we've solved literal equations like this from unit 3, I believe it was. Maybe it was unit 1. Could have been unit 2, whatever. All right? Let's start with S. So these are equations that we need to solve, and we're just going to use principles of equality to solve them. So on this one, the first thing, remember, just the same thing like we did when solving for just a regular x, like if that didn't have a power of 2, what would you do to solve it? You'd have to subtract 16 from both sides to isolate the x, which makes that a 0. Remember, that's how we get those phantom zeros. Drop your x to the power of 2. But now a equals 25 minus 16, which is old 9 -er. Then take the square root of both which gives you just x and the square root of 9. You could type that into the calculator, but you're going to get 3. Now remember, that was an x to the power of 2 equals the square root of 9. There's more than one answer, not just 3, but also negative 3. Two answers on this one. You know, we'll do u while we have it up on the screen. So on this one, it's 10 times x to the power of 2 equals 1,440. Divide both sides by 10, right, to isolate that x, making that a phantom 1. And gives us x to the power of 2 equals 144. Square root both sides to make that just x. And what times itself is 144? It's 12. But again, that's an x to the power of 2, which means that not only 12 would uh, make this a true statement, but also negative 12 would make it true. Two answers. All right, t, we're going to work the same way on uh, t. So I need to just make that an x to the power of 2, not minus 5. Got to get zero that out. So I'm going to have to add 5 to both sides on this one. That's going to zero out that negative 5. Drop your x to the power of 2, which now equals 59 plus 5 is 64. We've seen this already. So when I take the square root, I know that x would not only equal 8, but also negative 8. So again, if you replace that in there, 8 times 8 is 64, minus 5 is 59. Negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64, minus 5 equals 59. So let both those check off. And then part V, divide both sides by 2. Again, that's to make that a phantom 1. So x to the power of 2 equals 16 divided by 2, which is 8. Let's square root both sides. We've seen that before, though. Uh, we can still show the work, I guess. So 8 would split up into 4 and 2. 4 splits up into 2 and 2. So it's really the square root of 2 times 2 times 2. But we're looking for pairs on this one. So um, there's a pair of 2s. So that's a 2. This other 2 stays in the square root. And that's our value of x right there. Now, since it's, it was a power of 2, not only would it be this value, but also uh, negative 2 times the square root of 2 as well. All right, for a problem like w... You're going to need to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that divide by 2. By get rid of, I mean a phantom 1. So that's y to the power of 3 equals eh, 64. It's a good value because when we take the cube root of this, and you could put this one in the calculator, or you could look at the poster and see that it is a perfect cube. That gives us y equals 4. Now, since this was a power of 3 on this one on w, we do not make it 4 and negative 4. It's just 4. And then part x here, um, just to go back on this, please recall that uh, we don't really care about x being a positive, or p being some kind of positive value. We're just solving in this one for x, okay? So to solve for x on this one, we'd have to divide, and I did change the problem, remember? So we're gonna have to divide both sides by v to isolate the x to the power of 2, so that becomes a phantom 1. Now we get x to the power of 2 equals p over v. Uh, but to solve this one, to get rid of that power of 2, which square root both sides. Okay, so that gives us x equals the square root of 
P over V. These don't really represent anything. P doesn't really mean anything, neither does X or V. It's just, it's just an abstract, general, literal equation, which we've solved before, so you should remember how to solve these. So there's our objective. I can simplify square roots. Like I said before, um, you know, this, this second part of our objective, we should be able to simplify uh, cube roots as well. That's uh, roots with with a three root. Okay, so we should be able to do both of those by now.